Welcome back to Miniature Game Montage and our second game of Bolt Action. We've been wanting to revisit this game for a while, but we lacked effective 28mm World War II style terrain. I've made some purchases and have had the 3D printer going to fix that, but we're also going to dial it back a little bit and slow the game down and focus more on the rules. In our first game, we tried to add too much too quickly. In this game, we're going to have the Americans and the Germans fighting at 500 points. We've also slimmed the table down to 4x4. As we play more, we'll grow the lists, terrain, and our capabilities to produce a good battle report. Here's a quick rundown of the list we have today. For the Americans, we have a veteran second lieutenant with a rifle and an extra man also with a rifle. The first squad will be veteran infantry with six rifles and an NCO with a submachine gun and two BARs. The second squad will be identical. Rounding out the force, we will have an inexperienced Sherman 75 tank. The total is 494 points. For the Germans, we have a veteran second lieutenant with a submachine gun. He has one additional man with him equipped with a rifle. The first infantry squad will be regular Heer Grenadiers with three rifles and an NCO with a submachine gun, one assault rifle, and a light machine gun. The second squad is also regular with two rifles, an NCO with a submachine gun, two assault rifles, and a light machine gun. There's also a man with a Panzerfaust. They are supported by a regular Panzer IV-H, 499 points in total. The mission today is Sectors. The Germans have picked their deployment corner and must be 12 inches from the center of the board. The Americans set up in the opposite corner. The goal for both squads is to seize as many table quarters as possible and do as much damage as possible. Each enemy unit destroyed is worth 1 VP. You gain a VP by controlling a neutral, non-deployment table quarter and 3 victory points for controlling your opponent's deployment quarter. A preparatory bombardment goes out for both players with the Germans ranging in artillery. The bombardment has no effect on the 1st American Infantry Squad. The 2nd Lieutenant will take 2 pin markers. The Sherman Tank will take 2 pin markers. And the 2nd Infantry Squad is in the clear. And with that, we are ready for turn one. First die out of the bag belongs to the Americans, and the infantry are going to play in advance, moving to the top of this hill that will bring the German grenadiers into clean line of sight. They have six rifles and two BARs that they're going to let loose and the German player has decided to go down. So normally hitting on threes, long range fours, the Americans are not penalized for moving, but going to ground makes it sixes. The rifle shots go out, six of them needing sixes. There is one hit, the BARs are going to miss. They will need a four up to score damage here as the Germans are regular infantry and one damage is scored. That is going to cut down one of the German rifles. The Americans pull another die, and they're going to conduct a run move with the other infantry squad. Both infantry squads headed for separate table quarters. The Germans pull their first die out of the bag and activate the Panzer IV. He is going to target the American infantry on the hill, first firing with his main cannon with an HE shell, and needs threes to hit here. It is short range, no modifiers for cover. That is easily going to hit on this four, getting five men under the template. He will need fives to damage due to uh, veteran status of the infantry, and one rifleman will be taken out. The Panzer IV will then fire with his machine gun, his hull-mounted machine gun, needing fours to hit with long range. Two hits go through, again needing fives to damage. One more rifleman will be cut down, and they will take D3 pin markers, equaling a total of three. Now, we did forget the Hitler's buzzsaw special rule. We'll try to remember that moving forward. The infantry squad for the Germans will make a run move when drawing the next die, moving into the courtyard of the church. And then the Americans draw the next die. The tank is going to activate. We'll need to pass an order test here, and it does so with ease, getting a morale boost from the second lieutenant. And he is going to advance, moving up. And he's going to need more than sixes here to shoot the German infantry that he is targeting. First, he's going to fire out with the main cannon, with an HE shot, he will need sixes followed by sixes. That will miss. He's going to rattle off five shots with his hull-mounted machine gun. Those are going to miss as well. 
The American player will draw the next die, and the second lieutenant is going to pass an order test easily and move with an advance into the woods, giving his morale bonus to the Sherman tank and the infantry. And the Germans will pull the last die. Their second lieutenant is going to make a run move, getting behind the Panzer IV and giving his morale bubble over to his pinned infantry. And that brings us to the end of the first turn. The American infantry did some running here, uh, getting into better positions on the table quarters. Second Lieutenant and the Sherman tank moved up the middle of the board, starting to find out that these inexperienced tanks are not very effective whatsoever. The German infantry made a run here to get into the courtyard. We did have one German infantry cut down in the second squad as the second Lieutenant moved up behind the tank to give them the morale bonus. And we are getting ready for turn two. The Germans pull the first die and play an advance on the infantry to move up behind the wall. They are going to target the American infantry that are on the hill. They do go down, so sixes will be required to hit for the majority of these weapons. We are remembering to get Hitler's buzzsaw, adding in that extra die on the machine gun, which will fire first. So needing sixes, a hit will go through, but needing fives to wound due to them being veterans, that does not happen. The SMG fires next with two shots, also needing sixes, and one hit does go through, and it does not wound as well. The ARs then fire in blue, and the rifles in orange, needing fives and sixes respectively. Neither of those connect. The Sherman activates next, passes an order check, removing his last pin, and he is going to target the German infantry that just moved up. He will need sixes, however, due to cover and being inexperienced. The first shot is with HE in blue, it misses, and then five hull machine gun shots coming out. And we were going to see one hit go through here, and then needing fours to do damage, he does get that and removes one infantry. The roll for excessive damage is no good, and we're going back to the dice bag where we pull another American die. The American infantry are going to move. They're going to play in advance, move up their six inches, and they are going to target the German infantry that has moved behind the wall. Two BARs in blue, six rifles in orange. They are behind cover, but no penalty to move, so fives are needed. There will be three hits that go through, and then they need fours to do damage. One could be excessive, so we're going to roll for that. There's uh, two wounds on the table, no excessive. That's two infantry that are cut down. The SMG shoots, but needs sixes due to range, and those shots miss. The second lieutenant activates for the Americans and takes an order check to remove this last pin. We reroll a cocked eye. I don't think it mattered here, but he does remove that pin. They are going to use an advance to move up to the edge of the wood and get line of sight to the German infantry, and they are going to open up with their rifles. They will need fives. They are short range. Uh, no penalty to move, but they are in heavy cover, so two hits are going out on those rifles, and then needing fours to do damage. One damage, one rifleman is killed. The rest of the order dice belong to the Germans, and the Panzer IV is going to move up with an advance, moving 9 inches, and he's going to target the Sherman tank with his main cannon, and he will hit on 4s here due to moving, and that shot's easily going to go through with a 5. Uh, penetration value of 6 versus the armor of 9, so needs 3s minimum, that 4 is going to do damage, and it's going to be a immobilization on the tank. The hull-mounted machine gun will fire into the American infantry squad dead ahead. Needs fives because they have went down. We'll get four hits here, and then the rolls to wound needing fives. Two will go through. They are sixes, so we're going to roll to see if excessive damage happens, and it does not, but two infantry stands being removed. The German infantry squad will take an order check here and pass. They do have their second lieutenant close by. They're going to make a run order into the ruins here, taking up a better position on this corner of the board. The last die belongs to the Germans as well. The second lieutenant is going to make a run move up behind the tank, just getting cover. So turn two comes to a close. The Americans have pushed up. We saw an advance from the infantry here. A lot of shots dumped into the German infantry in the church courtyard here. They are down to two members, which is a small team. The Sherman was immobilized by the Panzer, and the Americans took a lot of casualties up on the hill. The Germans have been able to wrap around the flank here in this building and have secured this corner of the board pretty well. Looking forward to turn three coming up now.
The Americans pull the first die. The Sherman will activate, pass an order check on this five, and he's going to point the main cannon at the Panzer IV. But inexperienced, heavy cover, and having a pen is just not enough to do anything here. He's going to unload the machine guns into the infantry up front, but them being a small team, again, the shots fail to find any targets. Next die out of the bag will be the Germans, and the Panzer IV is going to return fire with the main cannon at the Sherman 75. He completely misses on this one, but then unloads the machine guns onto the infantry unit onto the hill. They do go down, so we'll need fives to hit here, and he's still going to land four hits. So they will receive another pin marker, and these hits turn into two wounds. We're going to roll these two sixes to see if the German player gets to pick. And he does for one, so he picks the NCO, and the other rifleman goes down. There's two BARs left. They take an order check for morale, and they fail on this eight, and they are out of here. The Americans pull another order die, and they are going to charge into the German infantry. And I've never done close combat before, so hopefully we'll get this right. The NCO is going to act as the loader for the machine gun. He's going to fire. They have three pins on them, so needing threes normally, it's sixes. All of those miss, so the Americans come and charge into contact. Now, they are coming up against an obstacle to which the Germans are in contact with, so they will fight over the obstacle. That means they'll both fight simultaneously, and... Uh, the Americans will need fours to kill, and the Germans will need fives to kill. Each man gets a swing, so nine dice coming from the Americans. They are going to cut down the squad, but the Germans roll two fives. They're in blue. They're going to cut down two Americans as well. So the combat will be over. The Americans will lose two men, but they will consolidate their position behind the wall. The Grenadiers are going to issue a run order, come out of the front of this house, and start moving around the back of the hill here, headed toward the Allies' deployment zone. The American second lieutenant is going to advance deeper into the woods to get out of line of sight. And the German second lieutenant is going to issue a run order. He's going to move back behind this wall. And that brings turn three to a close. Lots of damage done here. Got my first taste of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Hopefully I got that right. The score currently is one-to-one, -one, as one infantry unit per side has been destroyed. Turn four, coming up. Turn four of six, and the Germans pull the first order die. The Panzer IV will activate and attempt to shoot the Sherman with his main cannon, and he's going to miss again. Second die out of the bag will go to the Americans. They will pass an order check with Tiger Fear. A run move will be issued, and they are going to move into the German deployment zone, and that would be worth three victory points if they can hold it until the end of the game. The Americans will pull the next die out of the bag, and the Sherman is going to activate, pass an order check to remove his pin marker, and the turret will rotate, and he's going to fire the coaxial machine gun at the German infantry. They decide to go down, so sixes will be required. Getting some cover from the hill, these are all going to miss. The Americans pull another die, and the second lieutenant is going to move to the outside of the wood here, using it as line of sight blocking against the panzer. And then the Germans will activate their second lieutenant. They will issue a run order, and he's moving into these building ruins here behind the wall. And that brings a very brief turn four to a close. Both sides attempting to get to the quarters so they can score victory points. The Sherman trying to hang on against the Panzer and keep those German infantry pinned. Turn five coming up. Americans pull first. The Sherman will pass the order test with Tiger Fear and point the coaxial machine gun at the German infantry. They will elect to go down again, so sixes will be required. They will get a hit this time. That will pin the unit. Needing fours to do damage, that will fail. The second die out of the back will be the Germans. The Panzer IV will activate again, targeting the Sherman. Easily going to hit on a five this time, and then rolling to do damage. Also getting a five, so that will penetrate and then we're going to see what it does, and on a five, it is going to knock this guy out. So finally, the Panzer IV takes care of the Sherman 75. 
The Americans pull the next die and they are moving to the back of this house with a run order. And then the Americans pull another die and the infantry unit are going to issue a run order around to the back of the church as they creep up onto the back of the Panzer IV. Lastly, the German second lieutenant will make an advance just to bring the German infantry within his morale bubble. And that brings us to the end of turn five. Moving to turn six, the Germans are currently up two to one and the game could potentially end. We'll have to see how the quarters divide up and if any more damage can be done. Turn six coming up. Turn six, the Germans pull the first die and the Panzer tank is going to do a pivot and advance into the church courtyard. The second die out of the bag belongs to the Americans and the infantry squad is going to play in advance. They're moving up and they are getting the German grenadiers into clear sight of their rifles, needing fours to hit. The German player electing not to go down here because they need to run, and only one hit goes through, and it does not result in damage. They take a pen marker, but that's it. The American second lieutenant then makes a run move, and we move over to the Grenadiers. As they activate, they pass an order check. They will reduce their pen marker by one, and they are playing a run move, getting out of harm's way. Next up, the German player pulls the last die, and the second lieutenant is just going down here, keeping his head low. That brings us to the end of turn six. Do we play a turn seven? The answer is going to be yes. Can the Americans do any more damage to the Germans and prevent any more scoring from taking place? Turn seven, the Panzer activates, and he is going to execute a run move, getting into the neutral square so he can score two points. The American squad can't do anything, so they're going down here. The second lieutenant will go down as well for the Americans. Likewise, the second lieutenant for the Germans will also go down, and then we are going to take an order test here. The German Grenadiers have one pin on them, but they are still going to pass with this eight as they are regular and they're gonna be able to move into the American deployment zone, scoring additional points, bringing our game to a close, and the Germans are going to take a victory here, nine to six. They eliminated an American infantry squad and the Sherman for two points. They did get one of their infantry units into the American deployment zone for three, and then they had one unit in the two neutral zones for two points each. That equals nine. The Americans took out one of the German units. They did get into the deployment zone for three. And they also got one unit into the neutral zone for two, bringing their total to six. So we had a lot of fun playing this game. It went a full seven turns. Uh, really enjoy playing bolt action. We do plan to expand our forces. We plan to increase the number of points as we get a better grip on the rules. Please let us know down in the comments what we missed, what we could do better. Certainly appreciate that feedback that you provided in our first game, and if you can help us improve, these reports will only get better. But we do plan to expand with our terrain, our battlefield, and our men, so there will be more bolt action coming in the future. Really appreciate you watching. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.